हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू न्यू सेशन ऑफ क्लास एट चैप्टर थर्टीन ऑफ हिस्ट्री इंडिया आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस नो एज पर द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स जनवरी नाइनटीन फिफ्टी द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ इंडिपेंडेंट इंडिया केम इन टू फोर्स एंड इंडिया बिकेम अ डेमोक्रेटिक रिपब्लिक नो डॉक्टर राजेंद्र प्रसाद वॉज इलेक्टेड द फर्स्ट प्रेजिडेंट and dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan the first vice president of india now the first elections to the legislature were held in 1952 the congress won a majority at the center and the jawaharlal nehru was elected india's first prime minister now as indian democracy now you can see there are six points which we need to discuss number 1 uaf that is universal adult franchise number 2 secularism number 3 equality before law number 3 towards social equality number 5 division of powers between the center and the state and official language universal adult franchise one of the most remarkable features of indian democracy is that from the very beginning of the constitution of india gave the citizens of the country uaa this has enabled all the citizens of voting age to irrespective of caste religion wealth or sex now in many other democratic countries including uk and the usa some sections of the population such as the poor and the women have got voting rights after long periods of struggle now secularism India is a country of many religions. India's constitution has accepted secularism as one of its basic principles. India does not have any religion. All religion group including Hindus, Muslim, Christians, Buddhists, Jain, Sikhs, Baha'is and Zoroastrian have the same fundamental rights. One of these right is the right to freedom of religion. Now equality before law. All Indian citizens have equal rights and have to obey the same laws irrespective of their caste religion wealth or sex the government gives equal opportunities in education employment the use of public places and so on to all citizen regardless of caste religion wealth or sex you have read earlier about the age old social discrimination against the untouchable in order to end this Now, towards social equality in india everyone has equal rights but not equal social status some sections of the population such as the untouchables have faced centuries of oppression denial of the benefits of education and healthcare has made them weaker than the more privileged sections of the society many tribal population to have faced similar oppression and are finding it hard to preserve their cultural identities our constitution seeks to remove inequalities and ensure social justice by giving some extra help and facilities to some weaker sections of the society for example constitution has listed formally untouchable caste as scheduled caste and the exploited tribes that is scheduled tribes their caste and tribes are given reservation in government jobs and educational institution local self government bodies to help them improve their self social status and living as well now division of powers between the center and the states india is a union of states in india we have two governments level the center and the states india's constitution specify the subjects on which laws can be made by the center as well as by the states the subjects are placed in three list the union list to be dealt with by the states and the concurrent list to be dealt with by the center and the state both means both the government are responsible when they are dealing with the concurrent list means the center and the state both had the right to interfere now official language india is a land of many languages India constitution recognizes Hindi English as the official language of the union. English has been retained as an official language in keeping with demands of states whose people are not Hindi speakers. Every Indian state is free to speak choose its own official language which may include Hindi and English. There are 22 regional languages 
mentioned in the constitution and language used in its territory. Now the success. Over the three years, there have been regular elections in India. The people have elected representatives of their choice to form the government. And any government that has failed to perform has ultimately been voted out of power. This shows that real power continues to be in the hands of the people, which is a requirement of democracy. One of the directive principles of our constitution set the formation of panchayat as one of the goals of the government. Now, a law has been passed to make more panchayat in rural area compulsory. Now, these local self-government have bodies, democracies of the grassroots level. Now, despite this success, we have discussed the success now failures. Indian democracy has its own problem. One major problem is the use of vast sums of money to win selection. This has increased corruptions. Another corruption problem is that in some areas, a dominant caste or political group often forcibly prevent other caste or political groups from taking part in election. And voters quite often vote only for candidates of their own caste. All this means that the best candidate does not necessarily win. It means they are biased. They are caste biased. That can be said in this failure point of view we are discussing that. Alright. Major problem after independence. After gaining independence, India faced a number of problems. The communal violence at the time of independence forced millions of people to cross over either India or Pakistan. The Indian government was faced with the immediate task of giving shelter to those who came to India. Most of, <clears throat> most of the them were temporarily settled in refugee campus until colonies were built to the house of them. Now, integration and reorganization of state. Absorption of Kashmir, Junagadh and Hyderabad. The Maharaja of Kashmir signed the instrument of accession after Pakistani invaders entered Kashmir in October 1947. Now India then sent troops to drive out the invaders. In 1948, the people of Junagadh voted in favor of joining India and later that year, Indian troops helped in the absorption of Hyderabad following a revolt in that particular state. Creation of Andhra In India, there are many linguistic communities. A linguistic community is a community whose members speak the same language. During the national movement, several of India's linguistic communities expressed their wish to have their own states in independent India. At the time, the Congress agreed to fulfill their wish after India became independent. But the communal violence at the time of independence changed the views of many Congress leaders and uh, they have also including Jawaharlal Nehru as well as Vallabhai Patel. They feared that division of the country along linguistic lines would lead to more violence. The linguistic communities however continued to demand their own states. Now creation of Andhra, the strongest demand came from Telugu speaking people of the former presidency of Madras when Congress showed re reluctance to meet their demand. They looked to ag agitation during this campaign in this re region before the 1952 elections. Jawaharlal Nehru was met by Congress slogan and protesters uh, holding black flags and shouting anti-Congress slogans. In the elections of 1952, the Congress fared badly in the region. Now, around this time, Potti Srimanlu, a Gandhian leader campaigning for this actually happened. This caused widespread unrest and when Srimanlu died on 15 December 1952, after fasting 58 days, the situation went out of control. The Congress was forced to create Andhra. It came into existence in October 1953. Now, planned development. At time of independence, the Indian economy suffered from various problems such as unequal development in different religions, regions, low agricultural productivity, food scarcity, underdeveloped industries, and communication facilities as well and widespread poverty and illiteracy. Let us see what steps the newborn nations took to overcome these
points. Looking at the future, after independence, India has emerged as a stable democracy that participates actively in world affairs. Now, it is making great progress in the fields of information and technology as well. And uh, the space and nuclear technology and human resources development of India. India has set an example for less advanced countries that are trying to make progress. Terrorism, however, remains a threat to India's peace. And problems arising from economy and social disparity continue. In many parts of the country, some people are still treated as untouchables. There is a wide gap between the rich and the poor. And although women have proved their merit in various spheres, they are still subjected to gender bias and domestic violence. Now, this was all up to. Now, we have discussed many things in the chapter. I hope, now, I hope the chapter and the things are more clear to you.